We're going to quickly review the electron transport chain, show you where the steps of the electron transport chain sometimes get hung up. In other words, what are all the rate limiting steps that we could have influence over and how can we start to generate more cellular energy or ATP as a result of using different modalities in our life. The electron transport chain is literally that last few steps of energy production in our cells and picture it as a factory. As a factory, you need to deliver raw materials and then you need to process those raw materials in order to make a product. And in this case, the product is ATP, which is cellular energy. It's the currency of cellular energy. It's what cells need to do all the different jobs that cells are required to do. And so we have in the electron transport chain, which is literally a chain of electron transport, we have to get electrons from one end of the factory as a raw material through each step of the way until we get to the last step, which is ultimately energy production. There are a few spots in the electron transport chain that are considered to be stationary. And then you have a few spots in the electron transport chain which are considered mobile. And the mobile carriers are responsible for picking up electrons from one complex and delivering it to the next. And it just repeats that cycle. So you're trying to get electrons down this chain and a few of these are stationary. You can't get electrons from one complex to the next magically. You need a delivery system to do that. So mobile carriers are just that. They go back to one complex and deliver, and all they do is repeat that. And as long as we can move electrons down that chain, we can get the electrons to the last step and ultimately create energy as a result. They have long names. We're not gonna get into their long scientific names in this moment. So we'll just call them complex one, complex two, complex three, complex four, okay? And ultimately two mobile carriers. And one is called ubiquinol and the other one is called cytochrome C, okay? So you have complex one, ubiquinol, complex two, complex three, cytochrome C, complex four. And then at the end stage, you have this thing called ATP synthase, which is literally the machinery in charge of making ATP. So what happens is the first two ingredients that need to come into the electron transport chain are a thing called NADH and FADH2. Primarily those come from food. So as you eat food, whether it's glucose or fats, and you're extracting energy out, in the process of energy extraction, the Krebs cycle is throwing off these raw materials, and these raw materials are called NADH and FADH2. NADH is delivered to complex one, and FADH2 is delivered to complex two automatically. It skips a step. So we have FADH2 and NADH moving to complex one and complex two, and then we need to get electrons from complex one to complex two, and that first mobile carrier is called ubiquinol. Ubiquinol, another name for that, a common name for that is CoQ10. It's literally a mobile carrier responsible for taking electrons from complex one and delivering it successfully to complex two. And then we have to get all the electrons from complex two over to complex three. Now we're all at complex three, and then we need to get from complex three to complex four. And so we have one more mobile carrier who does that, and the mobile carrier for that is a molecule called cytochrome C. Now we have all our electrons at complex four. Another name for complex four is cytochrome C oxidase. And now at complex four, we're oxidizing that, and we're actually gonna make water. How do we do that? We do that through the use of oxygen. Oxygen moves in, it binds with some hydrogen ions, H2O. And so what happens here is that as we move those electrons, we combine oxygen and hydrogen to make water. That's the other waste product or byproduct of cellular metabolism. So the water is able to leave, and when the water leaves, those last hydrogen molecules move up into the intracellular space. All of those steps of moving electrons from one step to the next all released hydrogen ions, and those hydrogen ions moved into the intracellular space, and as a result, created this massive hydrogen gradient. And the reason we're creating a massive hydrogen gradient is because once we get a, enough hydrogen ions in that space, the concentration of hydrogen wants to come back through the membrane. And the pore that allows hydrogen to come back through the membrane is in that last molecule called ATP synthase. And so as the hydrogen molecules move from that space through ATP synthase to start equalizing that concentration gradient, it starts to spin the machinery of ATP synthase, allowing ATP to be produced. Again, these are all just the simple steps of moving electrons through a process from high concentration to low concentration, allowing a hydrogen gradient to be developed in this intracellular space 
which then allows a high concentration of hydrogen ions to move back through the pore, ATP synthase, to spin the machinery to make ATP. And again, all of these different modalities play a role along the way, and that's what we're gonna talk about in each of these videos. I hope you find this interesting, and if you do, please like it, please subscribe, and please share it. Uh, we're trying to make sure that people who want this information can find this information. And when you subscribe and share, it tells YouTube that it's valuable and it helps make sure that they share that information with those searching for it. So again, I appreciate your attention. We'll see you next time.